Welcome back everybody, my name is Avenger1. You might be wondering what this video is all about, but perhaps the better question is who it's for. Combat and PvP have been a big focus of mine since Star Citizen's release. I have been fascinated and inspired since I was a little boy with movies like Star Wars and shows like Battlestar Galactica. Heroes in cockpits fighting for survival in a high stakes fighter combat situation against the backdrop of a sci-fi universe. It is this singular passion that has driven me to play Star Citizen and to spend my time educating and inspiring others to experience the thrill of combat and dogfighting that I enjoy in Star Citizen. This video is a deep dive on my understanding of the flight model as it is currently in 317.1 and is directly targeted at the player experience, flight combat, and design teams at CIG. I have outlined some core mechanics and solutions to flight model problems and provide examples and personal feedback from over 5,000 hours of combat since Star Citizen's release. With the news of Star Citizen's drop in speed debate, I wanted to table some solutions for better gameplay as development is continuing. I wanted to break down the first, the main issues with combat as we have now, and then provide solutions for existing and visual aids and personal feedback to help. I would just like to say thank you to the teams working right now, and that despite the haters, the negative and sometimes hateful feedback you guys receive, know that Star Citizen has never been a more fun and more engaging place for myself or my team. For everyone else watching, please feel free to join the discussion in a mature and gentle way as there are strong urges to villainize and demonize those who differ in opinions. Do not fall victim to hysteria or anger. It is our ability to work together that will ultimately decide whether Star Citizen will fail or rise to a place no one thought possible. Enjoy the video, and like always, I was Avenger 1, and I'll see you next time. First thing I want to talk about is disengagement. But at first we need to look at what we currently have in our flight model right now. And this is obviously assuming that the speed changes haven't taken effect yet. So let's take a look at this picture. So currently right now in 317, this is roughly kind of where we're sitting, right? Now you'll notice that there are two different colored circles around each target. Okay, the Vandal Blade obviously having its size cone, which is represented by the weapon velocity that the system is using. Because the movement changes that you're going to make as either the arrow or the Vandal Blade are going to reduce the velocity or sort of reduce the engagement distance because a target that's moving and changing vectors you need to close on, right? Up until you reach the point of your maximum turn rate, which is represented by the center sphere, which is the, the deeper color red or blue. And this represents whatever maximum turn rate that specific fighter is capable of pulling. Now, if you orbit the enemy fighter at a range that's closer or inside that kind of deeper colored sphere, higher than his turn rates, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to be able to gain a positional advantage against that target, depending on the speeds. Now, you can do this quite easily against stuff like vanguards or quite honestly, any fighter that has a disparity between its turn rate of the ship attacking and the ship defending. This allows for different kinds of gameplay when it comes to managing the energy. A heavier fighter wants to stay at higher energy because the higher the speed, the higher the energy, the more difficult it is for a lighter fighter to maneuver into a position that is either outside of the cone of fire or outside of any threat engagement zone. Turrets also change this meta up quite a lot, which we'll get into later because I feel like turrets need a bit of a revamp. Okay, so we understand our basics here. We understand that our engagement distance is dictated by the applied damage that we can push out, which is, which is dramatically impacted by the velocity of our projectile speeds, hence why cannons are basically out of the meta entirely, because the zone that you can keep, like, capably apply damage 
is so short, you're only going to get shot to pieces by trying to close distance. And we have trouble closing distance because of two reasons. One, our accelerations, although they are high, because the overall speeds are so high, you get this kind of drift effect, which does require you to be a lot more precise with your throttle, which leads into more skill-based gameplay, which I'm all for. But at the same time, we have to build a game that feels enjoyable and exciting, and also doesn't be so confusing or so difficult that you literally have to become a professional pilot just to be able to get the most out of your ship. Okay, so what does this have to do with disengagements? Well, it's got everything to do with it. In a previous video called Masterclass on Dogfighting, I took a concept I was talking about when it comes to bubbles. Now, in this visual representation, you see two arrows, which are represented by the two kind of, you know, well, the white V shapes. And what I'm showing here is the engagement bubble or the engagement distance. Assuming both fighters are using repeaters, you'll notice that each engagement bubble is around 500 meters. Okay. And what ends up happening is because our overall top speeds are so high that as soon as you're in a spot where you've taken damage and you really don't like the position you're in, if you push your main thrusters and your side thrusters at the same time, it's called tricording, which is triple coordinate movement, which means you're getting all your thrusters to push you in a single direction. The ship goes up to some ludicrous number. Uh, for G-Force and you can get out of any kind of, you know, 500 meter bubble almost instantly, you know. So in one in one swoop, we have two high accelerations and on the other, we feel like accelerations aren't fast enough when it comes to some of these heavier fighters because they simply cannot avoid fire. So what's the solution, right? We do have a solution for part two here, but I just want to outline the issues that we're dealing with right now. And even if we get a reduction in overall speed, this issue might not necessarily go away too much. It has to be a fundamental decision that you have to make at the flight model level. Okay, so we understand disengagement as an issue. Now let's talk a little bit about gunnery. So what we have right now in 317.1 with fixed assist, obviously gimbals, um, there's kind of an issue just in, in general with the, like the gunnery in this game. You have to be pixel accurate way too much. And I feel like the game kind of suffers from being hyper pixel accurate, uh, even at relatively close ranges. On top of that, the issue with fixed assist, which you can see illustrated here, even against something physically large like a Vanguard, as long as I'm maintaining a proper corkscrew, maintaining good thruster control, if I'm outside of that kind of 500 meter cone that the Scorpius is engaging me at, then you'll see a lot of these tracers are not even touching me until I get within that 500 meter kind of distance. And this is largely due to the fact that even if the pilot saw the movement pattern that I'm doing and was able to adjust even a little bit off of the pip to adjust for the inaccuracy in what in what I'm doing and the pattern that I'm setting, the role that I'm setting, the fixed assist would pull the shot back into the incorrect firing solution, which would then cause you to miss every single shot up until you got to the point where the physical cross section of your ship overlaps the targeting error, which is what's being caused by uh, the, wet, the projectile. In layman's terms, uh, you got to get close enough that even when the computer misses, you're still applying damage, right? Hence why, and this is important, hence why physically small fighters right now are absolutely destroying everything else they can get their little greedy paws on. I mean, it's because of its physical cross-section. And because our weapons are so accurate that because they're so accurate, they're actually missing the target. Um, and because the fixed assist is pulling into the incorrect solution, incorrect solution obviously being something that you can manage. And if you have a physically small profile and you're fighting something that's large, it doesn't matter how much DPS you have. As long as you don't get within that magical range of 400 meters, you can stay at long range and you can plank away your target until he's dead. Hence why velocity and projectiles are so important. So, yes, fixed assist does help because it creates... A bit of a, a a failure zone, I call it, where even if you're not perfectly on the target, 
your gun, your guns are going to give you that last little bit of assistance to make sure that you're on target and that you're killing. But this is also due to two things. One, Star Citizen has extremely tough ships that require quite a long time to pull trigger to actually get a kill. So you need to maintain target acquisition for quite a long time to actually secure a kill. And two, when fixed assist is helping you, um, <laughs> it, it, it's not allowing you to cancel that kind of, you know, I wish there was a way to turn it off, basically. Okay, so let's tackle wobbling and speeds. Now, currently right now, because we just spoke about gunnery, our, our weapons are super, super accurate, and they're always kind of going towards the, you know, the pip solution, which not all the time is going to be accurate. We have this issue with what we call wobbling, right? Now, wobbling is immensely frustrating in this game because the truth is if you want parity between mouse and keyboard and joystick joystick cannot track small tiny pixelated things that are moving very quickly between two points it just doesn't happen like joystick as a nature of its of its system is not designed to pixel point like an aim device which is like a mouse right so there are lots of solutions to fix this issue but this is one of the big issues because it harms the gameplay of the game. It makes it feel frustrating. It's not an enjoyable experience. And this is coming from my own personal experience. But I've spoken to a lot of rookies and a lot of new people getting into the game. And when they experience this quote unquote wobble, um, it really leaves them with a sour taste in their mouth. It's not a fun experience. It's just not healthy for the overall game itself, right? Now this is an issue that's specifically to smaller fighters like the arrow and some of the other small things. You really don't see a lot of wobble with large vessels like the Harbinger and the Hurricane and all that stuff. But that does make you ask the question, well, why is that, right? Well, the truth is this. Physical size of your fighter has a lot to do with it. You could cut accelerations down on the arrow and it would still be able to outmaneuver at different ranges compared to some of the heavier fighters, even though it's you know, it should have higher accelerations. But the truth is, small ships equal hard to hit. Who would have thought, right? But there is a way to fix this. There is a way to kind of give a little more parity and balance to this. And it's in the form of some gunnery, some gunnery updates that I want to talk about in part two here. But I just want to clarify the issue that wobbling and the instant translation between different vectors in a very quick succession in a very fast amount of time, faster... And it's all relative, right? Like you understand, all these issues are relative, which I'm sure you guys know working on the game, right? But if the ship moves faster than the ability for the ship that it's fighting to turn its nose and track it, then what you have is you always have the kind of chase issue where the ship is always moving faster than, like its translation is always moving faster than the, than the nose of the enemy ship can translate onto. And this is compounded by the ch like the type of control system like for example joystick when it comes to being able to chase right so can the arrow track some of like a hostile arrows movements sure it's a lot easier with mouse and keyboard but uh, if you've ever picked up a joystick um, it is immensely difficult to track a very small target that's translating very 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 quickly between two different vectors right uh, and there's lots of ways to fix this but this is an issue that does affect the game in my opinion and also many people um, and I just don't feel like it's healthy for the game it just doesn't feel like a fun experience you know and I think at the end of the day to make a game that people enjoy is the number one thing that we're trying to do here right it's not just uh, you know to make a game that's relatively balanced but it's also a game that people want to come back to right and I highly doubt people signed up for Wobble Commander. Instead, I'm sure they signed up for something more like Star Wars, like we all excited, you know, when we were kids, right? Uh, you know, and so I guess that's the intent, right? But in my opinion, this is an issue, and hopefully it'll get solved. But let's talk a little bit about speed, and then we'll get into the solutions part, which is part two, which I'm sure you're very excited to take a look at, right? So thank you for bearing with me here, but I just wanted to make sure I clarified what, uh, what things are being talked about. Okay, so speed. Speed needs to be talked about because speed goes into a lot of other things. Now, right now, we have our full combat speeds unlocked, right? We have an entire throttle, all 1,100, 1,200, 1,300 meter per second 
accessible to us with no repercussion on buildup of heat, signature, or detrimental effects on the fighter. You can go from top speed to no, to no speed, and there's no difference. Okay? I understand that the game is in development, but we need to clarify here that if speeds are going to stay this high, which Yogi, I'm sure, talked about already saying that, you know, we're going to bring speeds down, and this is a good thing. you got to be careful because you can't bring speeds down too much because if they come down too much now you've got the same problem it's just magnified right because again it's all relative right so the balance and the relationship between the translation of the fighter and the turn rates and its overall top speed have to all be in sync now what do i mean by that so i think the issue right now is because we have such ludicrously high speeds People are getting into these issues where, um, you know, unless you've got really wicked throttle control, uh, it's very, very, very difficult to kind of stay together, right? Um, which again, I'm all I'm all for a skill based game. I really am, you know, and I, and I really like it being more flight based because it's one thing to just be a great, you know, pixel, you know, pixel shooter, but you know, I think a lot of us signed up for a flight experience as well as a kind of a shooter experience, right? Um, so speeds being super super high i think is an issue because also the game at really high speeds the hit detection and just some of the nature of the game it kind of falls apart a little bit at really high speeds and i think for the future of the game and for server meshing and all that stuff typically bringing down the combat speeds assuming we're going to keep relatively the same balance and tuning with the ships relative right now assuming um 600 to 700 is a relatively good spot to go because that way we have a little bit of distance play we can still kind of get ourselves out of sticky situations mostly most of the time you know because you don't want to get to a place where the speeds are so low where it becomes um you know you, you close to within a certain distance and there's absolutely no way to apply damage or sorry to avoid damage because you know it's just good luck you know you're just moving too slow right okay so we talked about speeds, we talked about gunnery, we talked about the wobbling, and of course, we talked about the big issue, which is turn rates and just basic combat gameplay, right? Now comes the fun part. Now comes the talk about solutions to some of these problems, and also if they're going to change the speeds, some things to consider, and just some basic feedback. If you made it this far, thanks for following, and also, let's get right into it, part two. Part two, solutions. Now, understand that these solutions are my own opinion based in the experience I've had with the game. And also, I'm going to use these visual aids to kind of help express my idea. Now, personally for me, I find that what we have currently right now in 317.1 is actually really good. Uh, the, the tuning and flight balance for some fighters is in a pretty good place. The Gladius and the Arrow are pretty spot on. The Arrow being the exception just because the maneuverability profile of the Arrow is so fast that because of its instant ability to move from one side to the other on its side strafe and whatnot, um, I feel like the Arrow could probably do with a little more jerk profile to make it a little more weighty because the truth is having a ship like the Arrow that's this fast and maneuverable Unfortunately, it does take away from the game a little bit, and that is a little bit unfortunate, but it is the truth. Also, increasing main thruster power on all fighters, including light fighters, medium fighters, heavy fighters, um, is, I think, the kind of way to go. Because it creates this asymmetric kind of gameplay, where the person pushing to close distance is going to have that kind of extra little bit of push. Because a lot of times what ends up happening is you get into these fights and each person blows right past each other and uh it's <laughs> it's really unfortunate you know um because each person is trying to stay close but because their main thruster acceleration is a little bit weak right now uh and we have overall top speeds being really really high that compounds the issue now if we drop overall top speeds to around 600 700 the area for us to play in becomes essentially half the size which means fighters are going to get closer no matter what and if we increase a little a little bit not a lot but a little bit on main thrust 
then it allows people to actually stay close and you get into these interesting kind of rate battles and, uh, and positional kind of gameplay, right? But I think the big thing is making it based a little bit more on position and distance rather than uh, who can make the most small jittery movements in a tight space, right? And that also leads into some other suggestions I have when it comes to gunnery because the gunnery being so accurate and the nature of how gunnery works right now is also, in my opinion, kind of what's holding some of the gameplay back, right? You know, in a perfect world, we might even get to a point where we don't need ESP and whatnot, but that might be a far stretch uh, as of right now. But take a look at this here. Currently in 317.1, this is the kind of pip solution that we're getting, right? Now, when we throw fixed assist into this, we can see that it's kind of creating this artificial, I guess you could say buffer zone, right? Where you're allowing a slight bit of inaccuracy based on the shot position. But what ends up happening is because the weapons are so accurate and because the pip solution again, isn't always uh, the right solution, we end up kind of bending the bullets in the wrong direction at the wrong ranges, which causes immense levels of frustration and also just bad gameplay. So here's my suggestion. Maybe instead of fixed assist, we tune the weapons so that they're shooting at more of a cone of fire with a higher fire rate rather than something you'd see with a kind of standard kind of fire rate where everything is super accurate. You can have super accurate guns, but I feel like for dogfighting purposes, this would allow us to have a different kind of gameplay that in my opinion would probably feel a little better. Now, ballistics kind of fall into this zone already, like something like the Mantis and the Scorpions and stuff like that. So at long ranges or anything outside of the quote-unquote effective range really isn't taking too much damage uh, unless it's a really large target. So this picture here, it kind of illustrates that point. Now, what we're seeing is kind of a visual representation of the kind of cone of fire I was talking about. And if you're within 500 meters, you know, the spread is going to be just small enough that it's going to encompass the enemy ship. But shooting for like specific parts of the ship, you know, you might not get super accuracy. Perhaps, maybe, that's what cannons would be used for. If you'd like super accurate pinpoint shot accuracy with high penetration, maybe cannons can fill this role. Because that would allow them to have a unique position in a dogfight at the same time still be something interesting to use against a heavier ship because of the penetration on armor values and its overall alpha DPS. So cone fire, in my opinion, is probably where the game should go if you're going to get a really exciting kind of dogfight feel because it's going to keep trigger discipline at an absolute maximum, which is a good skill-based skill check. And also it's going to allow the inaccuracies of, you know, people considered to, you know, quote unquote wobble or people that are, uh, you know, making those super tiny maneuvers to make more deliberate, more thought out maneuvers and rely less on the jitteriness of a ship and rely more on their position, their turn rate and their overall energy state of the fight, which I think personally for me would be a really exciting way to go because it would also bring a little bit of parity between joysticks and mouse because you wouldn't need to be hyper pixel accurate you could have a little bit of adjustment and that comes from really high fire rate and relatively uh spread out weapon groups so that you actually have the applied damage coming in and you can't uh you know you you should be able to make the projectile physical size also quite large you know, so you might, you know, instead of shooting bullets at someone, you're shooting basketballs, right? Not saying that you're actually going to shoot basketballs, but you're shooting a physically larger projectile. And this is going to help kind of saturate that zone. So you don't have to be super pixel accurate. When it comes to overall top speeds and the wobble issue, a lot of this can be dampened out by the gunnery changes I'm talking about, right? Whether fixed assist needs a little bit more love or they get the relative distances between fighters close enough that staying at high range and, you know, just staying outside of somebody's cone of fire and that kind of kitey gameplay uh, is perhaps a thing of the past. Or at least give us the option to turn off a fixed assist so that if you want to stay at longer ranges or you've got someone who is trying to kite you, uh, that you have some kind of uh, option to to mitigate that and to, to correct for those kind of inaccuracies in the pip deflection. So that pretty much wraps up uh, some of the basics here, but I want to leave you guys off with 
an idea that I've been kind of sitting on. And I think um, if I kind of express it and show it visually, then maybe, um, you know, maybe you guys will kind of understand where I'm coming from. Right. Ultimately, I want the best experience for Star Citizen that, that we can have. And I know you guys are hard at work trying your best to not only you know live up to the directions that Mr. Roberts probably has put on you guys, but also, you know, live up to uh, live up to the uh, your own, you know, expectations what this game should be. Right. And I kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about heat buildup and signature. Now, currently right now in 317, the missile system that we have is truly, truly a placeholder. And I understand that, right? But moving forward, there's going to be a signature system that needs to be dealt with because this is going to tie into everything when it comes to stealth, everything when it comes to missile gameplay and whatnot. And currently right now, whether it's the server ticks or some other issues, but missiles... Missiles need some love, you know, and um, although the new targeting system and the cone fire and the disallowing of gunnery uh, while you're in a missile mode is, in my opinion, a step in the right direction, it's the actual missiles themselves and the way the counterplay is working that, in my opinion, needs maybe some thought put into it. Um, not to say that there wasn't thought put into it, but there, and there needs to be something done, right? So I'm going to kind of give you guys an idea that I've been sitting on here and let me know what you guys think. Also, if you guys have any ideas in the comments or you'd like to criticize the idea, feel free. Join the discussion because like uh, Yogi said, right, we're making this game with you, not in a vacuum. <laughs> so this picture dictates or illustrates the kind of idea I'm thinking about when it comes to missiles. As it stands right now, if you flare, whether you flare at 20 kilometers or you flare at 500 meters, the missile will either get spoofed the second you fire the decoys or the missile will proceed to hit you. And that is largely due to either the signature of your ship and also, uh, you know, the strength of the missile, right? Whether it's an EM cross section or IR missile. So I was thinking perhaps in the future, an IR system or some kind of signature system should be associated to the heat buildup of your fighter. For example, if you're firing heavy, heavy, heavy on the guns and you're not getting many kills and you're just dropping mag after mag after mag, you're boosting for long periods of time, you know, you're creating a lot of heat buildup on your arrow or whatever fighter you're flying, but in this case, it's an arrow. You're saturating your ship with so much heat that perhaps it's more heat than your coolers can actually cool yourself down. And it gets to a point where your signature is so hot that even if you flare quite a few flares, you might not actually be able to pull a missile off. So, this goes into missile gameplay, right? I think it would be a really great experience to have something similar to what we had with Star Wars Squadrons when it comes to missile gameplay. You don't have to make missiles super crazy fast. You just need to make them a little bit faster than somebody who's, let's say, I don't know, an SCM speed, unless they're flying straight. Now, what we're trying to do here is create what's called a skill check, right? If a missile is fired, okay, and the missile is flared too soon, it's going to result in a death. If obviously you flare too late or don't flare at all, there's a good chance the missile is going to scream right in towards you. So it's a timing challenge, essentially, right? So first of all, you need to know where the missile is being fired from. So that takes situational awareness. You need to look around. You need to find, okay, where is the missile coming at me from? What's the angle, right? And once you've determined the angle, you know, let's say the angle is behind you. Someone is chasing you outside of a dogfight. You're trying to disengage and you're now above SCM speeds, whether you're in, whether you're in a new form of movement, like an old cruise control mode, or you're just quote unquote above SCM speeds heat buildup should become a lot faster and a lot like movements at really high speed should build up tremendous amounts of heat. So the more you're fighting at top speed, the more you're moving around doing things, the harder your coolers have to work. And also if you're firing your guns and fighting at that speed above SCM, you know, you're going to be burning really hot. You know, you're going to be, you're, the missiles are going to love you. <laughs> right. And so I think this is what needs to happen. Now, to gain a successful dodge, three things need to happen. One, you need to know where the missile's coming from. So you need to create the angle. As you can see here, this angle that was pulled on this, on this, on this incoming missile is around that 90 degree angle, right? 
And the flares have been released, which are also going to give the missile a harder time to track. And they've been released at the right time when the missile is within that last, you know, within the last 500, 800 meters, right? So the missile has gone to tracking mode. So it's a timing challenge, right? So the missile's coming up and we already have a tone system. So we kind of know where the missile is relative to where we are, you know, and so we have to be careful not to flare too soon. The missile, beep, 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 beep. There's tone. Okay, the missile's within 800. Flare, flare, flare. I know where the missile's coming from. I'm going to pull up hard. I'm going to boost, and the missile's going to zip right past me. If those three things are, are in play, the missile can be dodged. And what CIG needs to be careful of is you'll notice there's a cone of sight on the missile. And regardless of whether we have current missiles in today's world that have 360-degree tracking, Again, we're trying to make a game that's exciting and fun for everybody. I doubt people are going to have a great time when there's pythons running around in the air hitting people. For those of you who don't know what a python is, pray you never do. For those of you who play DCS, I apologize. <laughs> Either way, having a tracking cone on the missile so that it doesn't immediately turn around 360 degrees and retrack, I think is a good idea. Because that way, if the missile misses... That's fine. The missile misses and it sails off, either detonates after its fuel is gone, or perhaps detonates once it starts to realize it's losing distance from its target. Either way, the gameplay, I think, would be significantly better because this would give a role for missile boats in a fleet because anybody who's trying to disengage is trying to get out of the furball, is get, you know, trying to get out of the, out of the dogfight, um, is going to receive missile pressure, and they've got to be very careful um, you know, if they're built, if they built up a lot of heat and they're trying to disengage, uh, you've got a lot of angry missiles on you. You know, it might not be in your best interest to uh, to disengage at uh, super high speeds. You might want to try and disengage a different way, right? So, all right, guys, that wraps it up. Um, we went through some of the main core issues with the flight model. We had some solutions and some pictures, and I gave some thoughts. Um, I'm really glad you guys made it to the end of the video, and for all you folks out there you know, uh, at CIG working hard to kind of get this game off the ground. You guys are doing a great job, you know, um, despite what people say on the forums and on spectrum and all that silliness, you know, and even from myself from the past, you know what I mean? Being hard on devs, being hard on guys saying like, Oh, it's gotta be better. It's gotta be better. The truth is it only gets better if we work together and we do it 1% every day. All right. All right. And for everyone watching, uh, on YouTube and on Twitch and whatnot, um, you know, Give us your feedback. Give us what your thoughts are. Be constructive, please, um, and really give it some thought, right? If it's uh, if it's just hateful, hateful, shitty stuff, then, I mean, you know, it's just not going to get anywhere, right? Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video, and I hope everyone at CIG is doing well. I hope you guys are having fun making this game. I know I'm having a blast playing it, and I hope to see in the future with 318 coming out and some new changes to the flight model that there's some really exciting things coming down the road. I know I'm excited. I know everyone else here at the squadron's excited. So let's get her done. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys later.